Welcome back, ladies and gents. Uh, hopefully the technical difficulties have been all resolved. Thanks for the feedback. And we all will be into the game number one here in round one of the 4PL Corset Vengeance Cup qualifier number four. I met us joined by Pulse once again, and we are live into the action. And you threw me out a question in the champion select poll so that's what, as to what I thought about Skarna. So I'm going to just reflect that one back onto you. What are your thoughts about Skarna in the jungle? Yeah, so a lot of team fights happen in mid game, and then Skarna is really strong just with his kit in general. But the only problem is he doesn't give any sort of dominance at all in the laning phase, really, because his ganks are really weak. Since he only really has his ultimate, and when he doesn't have his ultimate, then there's nothing really there. Again, his ultimate is melee ranged, and his only form of CC is his Q, which he actually needs to stack up beforehand. So it's just very difficult to gank in general unless you have a really good ganking opportunity to come in straight from behind but that's uh, that is the problem with Scott. I'm just loading back up right now because the client did crash okay okay well uh, Soran's could be getting caught out here he's not moving a muscle he's gonna get stunned that's gonna be first blood from Urgot so I am not too sure what Soran's was doing because it appeared to me that he did not react in the slightest to what was about to happen so first blood will be going to AI and to Urgot at the bot lane. Yep, I'm st still trying to get in because uh, Riot did give me a Q, which was fantastic. Just want to carry on for a few seconds. Alright, so Doran's blade has been built up onto Urgot and it's going to give him quite the advantage at bot lane. We said this before, an early Doran's blade can be such a big advantage. Plus 80 health, plus 10 attack damage and plus 3% lifesteal against Corky. So, uh, fairly interesting stuff. Again, not too sure what Swans is doing. Maybe it's the case that there's some technical issues here because we do have a pause coming in. Ah, there we go, and yeah. it was called from Cyanide. So, there hasn't been any kind of explanation as to what's going on here. Uh, well, Felix just quit, so there you go. Felix has a baguette in his butt, <laughs> Amir <laughs> just said. That could be quite an issue to play League of Legends with, got to be honest with you. Yeah, um, Kenan says, I feel him, which is probably not the best statement to use in the circumstances. But, um, yeah. So, Urgot with first item as Doran's Blade, that's very interesting because generally... Urgot will not go for the same items as an AD carry, maybe he's just going for that early beefness, which makes a lot of sense, but even so, he might look for the early brutalizer, possibly the early uh, early glacial shroud, so building towards that early would be probably maybe better, but maybe he's just looking for the straight of dominance in the first couple levels, but we looks like we are going back into game. Garner just saying ready, and there we go. Yeah, everybody pretty much agreed that we're going to be going back live, but there, Felix oh, no. just goes and quits again. So, yeah, Cyanide saying one sec, he fails hard. Hmm. But yeah, Very I mean, Urgot, good. Uh, you didn't see this, I assume you didn't see it, Pulse, uh, the first no, blood onto Cyanide. But Cyanide was down in the bush just above mid, and uh, towards blue buff. The whole of the team from AI came towards him in the bush, and they ha he probably had at least two seconds to react, I'd say. And he just stood there. So it's got to be a case that he wasn't focusing. Maybe he was all tabbed. Maybe it was just a case he wasn't really paying attention. But that first blood to Urlok could be completely crucial. And as you can see, four assists on top of that to AI. So very nice early advantage thrown to the underdogs here. And they're definitely underdogs. You know, Fnatic are well renowned in the League of Legends scene, in the League of Legends community. AI, they seem quite decent if you base it off ELO, but. To be completely honest, Pulse, and obviously jump in if you have heard of these players, I have to admit I have not seen this team play before. Yeah, they are a fairly unknown team in that respect, but you yeah, never know, this is their time to shine to show the world that they have what it takes to uh, put Fnatic down in their place. But as you said, Urgot with first blood. Urgot is inherently extremely strong in lane, and that first blood should allow him to completely snowball it. There's no reason right now why he doesn't completely destroy his lane. And that's what should happen, otherwise uh, he's not really being as effective as she should be doing. And Lamia has played this role up. If, even if Lamia just outfarms him or gets equal farm, then he's won the lane. Yeah, that's very true, because Corky does scale off extremely well towards that mid to late game. He is a complete beast, especially when you have it on the likes of a Lamia. But Feliox here with... Uh, Leona can be very aggressive. Going to be jumping on here too. Urgot instantly stunned back from the 
uh, bedazzle, or the dazzle I should say, of Tarek, and then you see exactly what I was saying before, Noxin Corrosive Charge and Acid Hunters will be dropped instantly afterwards, so I think that's the composition they're going for a bot. Get the stun down from Tarek, allow Urgot the free E and Qs afterwards onto Corky, and just try and harass them. As you said before, he's inherently strong in lane, he is a lane bully, and uh, if Corky can stay toe-to-toe, -to -toe, it's going to be good news for Fnatic. Yeah, definitely. I'm just taking a look at Shyvana top facing off against Kennen, and Shyvana is also a lane bully. And I'm just seeing how well she does because obviously Shyvana's top is very strong. Levels one to four, she's got the advantage on any re uh, any matchup really. I'm just wondering if the same is true for Kennen because he obviously is ranged. She should be able to close the gap, but obviously it's a lot harder since he does have that 550 range. And uh, yeah, fairly equal farm there as well. Kennen should be catching up fairly soon. And again, not too much happening. Bran seems to have the slight advantage in mid. He does, in fact, have that blue buff, which is helping out a lot. And XPK is not really able to return the favour with the mana, just doesn't have the same harass that a blue buff will provide. Yeah, that's one of the great things about having a character like Elise Sin or Dr. Mundo in the jungle, just to mention a couple, that they, they don't need a blue buff. So it's going to allow, allow Bran to really spam those abilities. As I said before, I think the way he's going to try and play this is to stay at range, to pop off his W there, you just throw it land onto Peke, then the E afterwards, and really try and harass Peke down. Like a war of attrition, really. Just get Zyra out of the lane, and Brand is doing his job nicely. So far, you can see that on the HP, he's doing just that. How's it looking on farm? 26 to 20. So he is definitely getting the upper hand. That's for sure. Yeah, and XPK is pretty much out of mana and out of health, so very much, well, very little you can do. And uh, maybe Sanald will take over the lane, but he has to be careful because Brand does have the kill potential. Another pill of flame. In fact, he could have just flashed and gone in for the kill there. That was an easy pickup. But even uh, even so, at top, once again, the creeps are pushing towards Sarah's tower. And uh, not being that aggressive on Kennen, I'm kind of surprised because as soon as he hits six, then Kennen might have the upper hand because he is a great duelist. And meanwhile, at bottom. Yeah, Dazzle went in, but Leona instantly jumped on towards the AD carry. Exhaust has gone down onto Lamia, and Felinox is taking so much damage he was forced to flash away. Flash comes in from Urgot. That is going to be a kill, but can Corky pull himself back a frag here? Yes, he will, before being taken down also, but from Tarek. So that was a 2 for 1 exchange at bot lane, and definitely going into the hands of AI. So interesting play there. A couple of summoner spells burnt in the process, but 3 1 is the score. And a little gold gap is starting to open up here in AI's uh, advantage. Yeah, and that's exactly what Urgot wants. He's now got the Brutalizer as well, which we predicted. And he's going to be extremely strong. As long as he just beats Corky in lane, then he's done his job. And as long as he stays ahead, and that's all he's really looking for. Expecting now back in lane and doing some decent harass to Brand, actually. He hasn't got any pots himself. So again, Zyra, and uh, well, Bran has to be careful that Zyra doesn't offload on him and that burst takes him down because they are approaching 6 very, very shortly. In fact, Bran already has his level 6. Meanwhile, on top, I'm still very surprised. Like, Shyvana is actually behind Ken a fair ways now purely because he leveled up before her, getting that level 6 and level 5, so she couldn't be aggressive because she doesn't have the extra skill point. And that's very significant. Shyvana has to take every advantage in lane, and if she's behind, even by like a fraction of a level, then he's going to level up, he'll have the advantage, and then he can punish her for it. And that's exactly what Kennen is doing. So, Soaz is now level 6, but I don't think he has the trading, a uh, trading power to actually beat Kennen in a duel, especially with that slicing maelstrom, which makes him such a great duelist. Yep, so we are going to see Kennen returning back to his lane with a Hextech Revolver. Uh, Shivana, so far, has two no magic mantles, so obviously we're really trying to negate all that magic damage that comes from Kennen. In the meantime, Skarna is pushing in towards Lee Sin. That's actually the first time I've seen the Muay Thai Lee Sin skin, actually. Have you seen it before, Pulse? Yeah, he was uh, the person who uh, was playing it compared him to a chicken. Um, so much <laughs> going on to Lee Sin, actually. A chicken. Well, yeah, the aforementioned Lee Sin is in combat here against Sars. Here comes Cannon from the side. He's going to quickly turn into a 3 versus 3. Slicing Maelstrom has been used there. Shyvana also popping her ultimate in the process. Is there going to be enough damage? There comes a the safeguard from Lee Sin making sure Kennen does stay alive. And meanwhile, we have a skirmish kicking off here. Zyra will pick up the kill onto Brand, with Scarlet chiming in with the assist. And now Soaz is in all kinds of trouble, because here comes Stampy on Lee Sin, and Kennen on top of that. Can they pick up the kill? Flash comes in, 
and the burnout is nearly off cooldown. So nice summoner spell being used. But here comes Zyra and Skana from the backside on towards Stampy. Kennen is going to be able to actually escape. No, no one seemed to bother to go towards him. And Peke taking so much damage, is going to pop off the Stranglethorns, picks up one kill, Ignite's taking down onto Kennen, can she get the second? Answer is a no, but that was a really strange team fight. So as now seemingly going in for the kill, it's actually going to pick it up with the cheeky little flame breath. So 4-3 to three overall, and that team fight really baffled me, to say the least. Yeah, that was like crazy weird. Basically, XPK came in and missed all of his skills and then was out of mana, but managed to get the ultimate while picking up the kill onto the Lee Sin. But even so, that was a very janky team fight. Everyone's just all over the place. They completely ignored Kennen. I'm not really sure what Skana was doing. And then they were trying to do something at the tower, and then they backed off and went back in again. Took a lot of tower aggro and then eventually picked up the kills. But as you said, it was. wasn't very clean, to say the least. And Brandon looking for a gank on bottom, in fact, even though the waves pushed up was somewhat of a dog's dinner, but can they try and make something more clean occur? Here comes Brand from the side. Phoenix is going down so, so quickly. And Brand will pick that one up comfortably, but it could have very easily gone to Urgot or Tarek too. It was one of those kind of <laughs> tense affairs at bot lane. But I thought maybe they could try and go for the dragon. They're not going to bother though. Lee Sin is covering mid. In the meantime, Urgot and Tarek will be attacking bot tower, the tier 1 tower and lots of pings are going off. So currently it is dead even, 4-4, four to four, about 12.2k gold each any second. Now there you go, could not be any closer in this encounter. Yeah, definitely, and so that's going on to Frogman top. Yeah, I'm so not doing uh, Yeah, Sharon has popped off her ulti, but I don't think either of these are going to fall into a trap and alarm cells to be killed. In fact, having said that, Slicing Maelstrom has been popped off here. But Saz, of course, will get the additional armor and magic resist while in dragon form. So Slicing Maelstrom was never going to take him down that easily. And they are just going to resume the farming frenzy. Lots of pings at bot lane, actually, because Lee Sin is down here. But if you have a quick look in the bush, there is a blue ward in there. So they know exactly what is going on. You can see Cyanide maneuvering himself into position. But again, there's also a pink ward in the tri-bush. We're going to have an ultimate, though, being used there. Solo Flare as well from Leona. And they are going to have a kickback. Here comes the Impale from Skarna. Lots and lots of damage being exchanged between these two teams. The two AD carries going to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Both of them fall, actually, and exchange kills. And now Peke oh. is coming in to try and clean up some of these players. But all he's going to get is a pillar of flame for his troubles from Brand and that's going to keep him in place. So a 1 for 1 exchange again. In fact that was a 2 for 1 exchange, by my pardon. And uh, Corky is still going to be standing tall. Going to recall and that's 6 to 5 in Fnatic's favour. So again, working out for them but only just. Yeah, so I to be careful though. <laughs> He's taking a lot of harass from Kennen. And it's very odd. He's going for trade onto Kennen at very interesting times. Like, he had the advantage, okay, he pops the ultimate, and then, of course, Kennen just goes out of there with the E because he knew he can't trade because, obviously, it's in dragon form. Then ults his own. He just didn't have the damage there. If he just waited until the dragon form was off, he might, uh, might have been able to follow up on that one with the Ignite also. But even so, not too much happening at top. But I feel if, Ken if Kennen just survives top, then Shavan's going to be less useful than a Kennen in a team fight, even mid game. She has a lot of AoE, but a straight up AP carry is just always going to be more relevant. And uh, Shavana has a lot of power in lane, so we'll see how Soaz does. I mean, it also does have a lot of damage that's not to be discounted, because in Dragon Form, he has a disturbing amount of AoE damage, which people often forget. Yeah, and also a bit of displacement, because obviously you can push the enemies back or back towards your team, depending on what the case may be. So, definitely one to watch out for, but as you say, Kennen is a real nuisance. We're going to have some flashing uh, action there. Brand is flashing up red from Zyra, and as we mentioned before, Zyra is so, so good at the burst damage. Also has the blue buff, so it's going to be consistently spamming away those spells. As I mentioned, that's of course she's going to lose it, uh, just to rub egg in my face. But uh, her alongside Skarna were trying to blast down that tower. Got it down to less than half HP. And now starting to push down towards the bot lane. So maybe going to be setting up a gank. Maybe going to go over the dragon instead. Not too sure. There is a ward down next to the dragon pit from the purple team. So they know exactly what's happening. The question is, can they maneuver themselves around and stop this from happening? Or they just let it slide? 
looks to be the case of letting it slide for now as Kennen is still at top lane and uh, yeah Dragon is going to be taken down from Skarna and Fnatic didn't really bother to move and you can completely understand that decision Paul so it would have been a 4 versus 5 would have been very very dangerous yeah definitely and once again we have the in fact meanwhile mid yeah Ignite has been popped down from both mids I think that was and uh, neither of them are going to fall. Both are relatively low HP, but should be just fine. Yeah, I get the feeling they could contest it. I think they're just a bit scared at that point. I feel they have the stronger team fight as well. In fact, they should be pushing it because they do have that Lee Sin, of course. And uh, yeah, definitely a top. Kennen was not able to pick up the tower, but it's very, very low. He should be able to pick that up, even if he just face tanks it. Stampy just applying the pressure down on mid as well. I definitely feel they need to be forcing your team fights because Ergot starts to scale off, Lee Sin will start to scale off, and uh, unfortunately Ken does not have the teleport so he can get down, but they should definitely be looking for those early team fights if they want to put themselves back into contention because they are already 2k behind, but a kill behind, which doesn't matter all that much, but obviously if your team scales off by, um, by default, then you're going to have to try and push your advantage while you have it inherently. That's a very good point, actually. That you know, we said this a few times. Unless Lee Sin has a blisteringly hot start, he's not going to be the greatest of uh, junglers or indeed champions going into that late game period. But he is at top at the moment. So, speak of the devil, he could be in the action very shortly. Slicing Mills from has been popped off. The display of smoke comes in from Shivana, pushing them both back towards Skarna. Skarna seems to be caught on team lines. Where to go? Lee Sin should be picking up this kill on for Shivana. In fact, he's not going to get this kill and indeed. He's going to go down himself from the tower aggro and Skarna at the end. So somehow, Smaz is going <laughs> to manage to survive that one. And I can only imagine that Stampy is slamming his keyboard right now in pure frustration. That was so incredibly close. Yeah, and that's the great thing with Shivan. She has so much mobility, and the burnout gives a massive amount of movement speed. More than like, it's probably one of the best escapes just because of it. It's not like a straight up escape like a Valkyrie, but it's still absolutely crazy. I think it's more than like New News Blood Boy as well. It's absolutely insane. Mil Habasim Tarek has been caught. Yeah, he should be going down here. He's going to flash away, actually, and get the stun off, but Leona should be able to pick this one up. Nope, Corky's going to oh. go ahead and use his missile barrage to perfection. So Lamia takes down the kill. Moves himself 3 1 and 118 creep score as well. So he's out farming Urgot as it stands. Plus, on top of that, there's a dragon top plane. You're going to have Killing Spree coming in, courtesy of Cyanide with Zyra up there. And uh, it seems this game is quickly escalating out of control in Fnatic's favor. Just a few moments ago, I remember mentioning it was about 12k each. And now there is nearly a 4k gold advantage to Fnatic after 15, nearly 16 minutes. Yeah, the issue there was basically those were getting picked off, which is kind of funny considering their composition, but even so, they need to go for those team fights. They can't afford to fall behind and those small little victories that we keep talking about, which ultimately leads to, uh, leads to a team fight which is going to be completely out of their hands. So they just need to force something. That dragon fight was a, a great opportunity, but they weren't around the area. It was counter warded and they were not able to respond on that one. Maybe they could go for a free four man invade as well. They have great skirmishing ability, so they should look to do that. But at the moment, they can't let this happen. Like, they'll slowly lose. It will just be a very slow death if they don't just make a play and go for it right now. Yeah, for sure. And Kennen's not exactly having the greatest of games here. He is uh, slightly ahead of Shivada on CS. Speaking of which, he's going to be harassing down so as trying to push him away from his tower and doing just that. But the burnout's going to be more than enough. Uh, movement speed to get Sars out of that sticky situation, but he's 0 2 and 1. Shivana 1 1 and 1. Hands the Heart of Gold has had it for quite some time. Also, Recurve Bow and the Null Magic Mantle is recalling with, let's see, 660 gold. He's going to pick up uh, a few Sight Wards, and on top of that, you're also going to have a Ruby Crystal. So it's really not looking too good right now for AI. You feel that it's going to have. Wow, I just went to mid lane and saw Brand get completely popped. He just what got chunked down from 70%. Yeah, yeah, it was instant. Wow, Zyra. Mm. <laughs> it is disturbing. Disturbing damage. And interesting, going with a different build this time. Zyra has been played several times in competitive play, and x we've seen this a couple times, is now changing up the build. Does have the Chalice of Harmony, makes a lot of sense, and going into Stampy as well, the burst oh damage God. with the Ignite, and might be able to pick up the kill. There it is. Skarna looking to clear this one up, but Zyra pick it up with a bleed from that Ignite, but... Pretty, pretty insane burst right now, and the chance made, se uh, made sense because Bran had the blue buff, 
and she just needs to match it basically and will be following up with the unholy grail and Zara's one of her main problems is a bit like Ziggs she has a huge mana cost and not a lot of straight up damage with the burst early on she gets it later and also the plants do a lot of damage if you can keep them in place for more than like a split second move at top yeah Kennen should be falling here in pale and the dragon's descent bit of overkill from Soaz but uh, did pick up the kill eventually and it's, it's looking really just one-sided, Paul. So uh, you did mention before, you know, Zyra has high mana costs and does run out of mana very, very quickly. Well, and the Unholy Grail, Athens Unholy Grail, right from the get-go, is going to be his first item of choice, followed by the larger rods. And that's going to try and counter the uh, mana cost issues that Zyra faces. And even with relatively... Uh, not exactly end game items, still damage output, the burst potential is incredible. Absolutely incredible. How do you play against that? With Zyra, if you get two or more kills, you snowball out of control because base, she doesn't have a lot of damage, but if she gets like one to two kills, then she vamps up very, very quickly, like frighteningly fast, to the point where you don't really see where the damage comes from. And then it's just Zyra has gotten to that point where she's just chunking off your health like no tomorrow. But with like if she's like 0 and 1, she won't be that threatening. It's literally with those couple of kills, it's a bit like Fizz, in that when you get the ball rolling, it's very difficult to stop. Yeah, so Dragon has respawned for a little while. Is going to be attempted straight away from AI, and you feel this is a bit of a desperation move. They know they're a long way behind, and they're trying to make up some ground, but in doing so, they could actually get taken down. That's going to be a purple team taking down Dragon, but at what cost? Double kill for Zyra. Do not want to feed her anymore. It's looking so, so scary. Flash has been popped from Lee Sin just to get through the wall. They're going to be chasing after Tarek here. It should be a third consecutive kill. Indeed it will be. Can they pick up any more? Kennen's on low health. Leona's not going to bother to chase him down. So it was a dragon for three kills. Very nearly four kills. And uh, realistically, Fnatic are going to be just fine with that happening. Because, look, 8k gold ahead after 20 minutes. That is a massive, massive difference in this game. As you said, it was more of a des uh, desperation move than anything, and then just got pincered where they couldn't really peel anyone off their carries. It was a close quarters fight, and their a AP carries just got gibbed before they could do anything because basically Fnatic could just line up all of their skill shots, land them perfectly, get all the AoE on whoever they wanted because they were so clustered, because they forced them into that tight ball. So XPK landed his full burst, so did Soaz, and Lamy, it was just frightening damage. And at the moment, I think it's kind of just gotten past that threshold, and really AI just needed to go for that push when they had the advantage, the inherent advantage from their characters, but at the moment they've just let those small victories mount up and, well, it's gotten to the point of possibly no return unless they can make the big plays. Uh-oh, Urgot, if he gets caught here from the Zenith Blade, well, he didn't, but had that landed, could have been in a lot of trouble right there. He does have some cavalry coming in the form of Brand and Tarot, but there is a ward down, actually, through the bush that Brand was just using. So interesting placement, but very nice, seeing the kind of transfusion of players coming across the map. But yeah, as you said before, I have to feel that AI are just slowly but surely dying out in this game. Uh, with this kind of lineup, you'd have expected them to have a much stronger start. You know, Urgot even got first blood. He should have been able to really bully Cork. He wasn't the case at top plane. Uh, shaman has been having a cakewalk against Kennen, and then in mid, I mean, 6 1 and 3 Zyra kind of paints the picture for you. It's very, very one sided across the board here. And as you can see, we, uh, we have another pause coming in. Apparently, Urgot couldn't even auto attack. So, uh, yeah, strange. Yeah, and uh, he is reconnecting. But definitely, when it was 12 to 12k, as you were saying, then right there, they should have just pushed. Gone for like a free four man invade, and then hoped that Fnatic would try and uh, respond and stop them, and then kill them, whoever they come with. Because they're going to be more clustered, because they've grouped up, and then the lanes are to the side. You're going to be able to get a uh, pick before that even happens. And a lot of them had level 6, so they had the displacement, they had the stuns, they could have gotten those picks pretty easily, with most of them having a stun or some sort of CC. Or pretty much everyone, in fact. So, that would have been a very easy pick, and then they could have pushed the advantage. But they didn't, they kind of sat in their lane, started farming, which is not what you need. I mean, okay, Lee Sin offers a lot of roam potential in the lanes, a lot of ganking potential, but at the same time, they had to go for those invades to actually force a little skirmish so they can pull themselves ahead and um, make up for the difference that they will have late game or even mid game that Fnatic are having over them. So, what I find interesting is in the Champion Select, you asked me about Skarno and I said, 
I think he's very strong once he gets to level 6, obviously when the Impale comes into play, but before then, it's really down to the lanes to kind of fend for themselves and to wait for him to pick his opportunities. Obviously, if Cyanide sees an easy kill, he's going to come in and try and pick it up. But generally, Skarners are going to be similar to a Nocturne. They're going to just try and bide their time till they hit level 6. Then they be can become very much a presence once again. So, interestingly enough for me, Skarner has 3 kills, 0 deaths, 8 assists. Lee Sin can gank right from the get-go. He's very, very strong gank. So safeguard is great maneuverability to jump onto his allies. He's also got the Q where he can jump in as well. And the E which slows everybody down. So, he's got 1 kill and 2 assists. So it just seems to me, and again that reflects what we said before, that AI did not utilize that lane bullying strategy early game to really push the envelope in the lanes. They just let it slide and they allowed Skarner to become more and more of a factor in this game. And he's going to oblige. You know, Cyanide, if you give him a chance, he is just going to walk in there and he's going to pick up kills for absolutely everybody, no problems whatsoever. Yeah, definitely. And it just simply comes back to you have to utilize your composition if you're going to go for it. And... Oh, okay, X Peke just using his ultimate on a bush. I'm fine. And <laughs> Banner coming down mid. It's coming down mid, and it's going to be a ultimate onto Brand. But there's three players there. Needs to be careful. Here comes Zyra though. And uh, yeah, maybe with that ultimate up, could have thought about trying to pick up some kills. But at this point, you know, if Peke can land his E, his grasping roots, which basically is his snare, he's guaranteed probably at least 75% damage on any target that he pleases, so he is so incredibly strong at this point. As you said before, Pauls, give Zyra a few early kills and you really can't match her. She's so, so scary. Like, look at Brand's items compared to Zyra's. And a Holy Grail, Large Rod, and also Blasting on in fact, hold that thought for a second, because Soaz could be going down, has popped off the Dragon's Descent, slicing Maelstrom prematurely there from Kennen, does manage to get the stun final on towards Soaz, but they're not going to give chase because they know Peke is lurking, and they are very, very scared of uh, him right now as it stands. But yeah, look at the difference in items, just absolutely huge. Brand's been pretty much forced to buy up Riley's Crystal Scepter just for survivability more than anything else. Yeah, and they're trying to play the survive game, and they can't, they really can't. Like, if you just take a look at the composition, Ergot's Elzov, Stampy on Lee Sin, and then you have Tarek, doesn't offer the same utility as everyone else on Fnatic's team. So, I'm not sure what they're expecting to happen here, I, I, I don't know. And Brand has been caught. Oh my good god. Um, yeah, there's not too much to say about that. Brand got completely cream crackered. That's that's kind of the way that it went. And what do we say? If he lands the snare, it's all over. Yeah. That was incredible damage. Even with the Riley's Crystal Scepter and two Doran's Rings, Brand went down in a heartbeat. Just so, so quick. That's scary right now. Peke can pretty much do whatever he wants. He can be just chilling in the opposition jungle. And uh, if he catches a snare, it's going to be at least 50% damage. And just going back to what you said before, uh, in fact, hold the thought because we're going to have a flash and impale from Tarek. Lots of damage being put down. And that is going to be a going to pop up his ultimate on towards the tower. Zyra instantly flashing away. Kennen is coming around from the back side. So they could feasibly start this team fight off. Not likely though, because it would have been a 3 versus 4 situation against the Fed Fnatic lineup, so it wouldn't have been smart to try that one. But yeah, you said before about Tarek, doesn't really give the same utility as Leona. Exactly, that's exactly the case. You look at Leona's ultimate, the solo flare, it's a glo it's a well not a global stun, but in a range it's gonna stun lots and lots of players. So as has been caught once again, but gonna Dragon's Descent away. With the burnout, should be able to get away here. Does dodge the Q, but is going to get stunned actually, so will be getting dropped from Brand finally. And the shutdown does come into effect. That is the second death for Shivana in this game. But yeah, there's just a massive difference between these two teams in utility now, going forward to around the 30 minute mark. Yeah, definitely. And even though I'm not sure that kill was worth it, they burn all of their summoners, four summoners for a kill, meaning next team fight, Ken is not going to have his flash, meaning he can't flash into position. He doesn't have his Zonis yet. Nope. So it's going to be very difficult for him to position because basically he's getting gibbed before he can actually unload his potential. And that's what's happening right now. So the fact that he can't even position himself with flash means that, again, they're just got no chance of really doing anything unless they get a pick. Their best chance right now is to get a pick. Like, all of them have CC, but I get the feeling that Fnatic really aren't going to let that happen. Shyvala did get picked, but they have to expend everything to get her. Oh, the burst damage once again. Stranglethorns has been used, but flash away from Urgot went very, very low HP. Peke is being attacked from Brand here. 
but it's not going to be too bothered having set up though. Here comes Lee Sin and Kennen from the side. Can they burst down these players? Dragon's Flame comes in, the Rage even I should say, from the Lee Sin. But Zyra is still standing tall, so she's going to be just fine. They're now going to try and opt to come back on themselves, and that's going to be a kill from Zyra on towards Lee Sin. So getting some revenge from that previous aggression. And that was a 1 for 0 exchange at the end of the day. Again, lots of you abilities and some spells being burnt in the process. And AI simply cannot do anything at this point. I think, to be honest with you, Pulse, this game was over about 5 to 10 minutes ago. Yeah, for sure. It, at the point where they didn't push the advantage that they had, then it was over. Because with a team like this, you have to. You have to recognize when you're ahead and then push your advantage. If you fall behind, you're going to stay behind. It's just a composition that the rolls with. They have very snowbally champions, but you can't snowball. Okay, yes, you have farm, but inherently you will scale off, and now Ken's being caught. Oh man, it's, it's so much scariness. There's so much terror there from Fnatic. Here comes the Stranglethorns knocking up Tarek. Tarek's going to fall. Corky claiming that kill. And now jumping on towards Lee Sin. Leona is in no man's land, but look at the burst damage potential here. Once again from Fnatic, the Pyroclasm does come in from Brand. Will pick up the kill onto Leona, very nearly taking down Corky. And also Zyra on top of that. They're going to be forced to flee away. And Brand does manage to stave off the onslaught just for a couple more minutes. But you have to feel, Pulse, it's just delaying the inevitable here. AI should lose this game. Yeah, unless they get the pick onto Soaz, who I don't even know can duel the blue buff. What? <laughs> Okay, Chicken Lee Sin on the hunt for Zyra, or Trivana rather. Oh, actually used his flash. So Soaz is a flash down, and for me that was a bit of a waste of a, a summoner ability. I, I can't see how he ever got away in that kind of situation. And it's going to be a free dragon to the purple team of AI, but it's, it's really a constellation more than anything else. It's not going to change the tides of this team fight. You feel that Fnatic are going to have to throw away the next two or three team fights consecutively, if not more, to actually throw this game at this point. I mean, there's just a massive difference. Five to one towers, 46.2k gold to 34.6k, 20 nice. to nine. Gonna just uh, smoke stool, smoke stool, do smoke, bite stole that blue buff. Okay. Skana, yeah. Yes, Skana did that, and yeah. uh, you Boss. didn't hear me mess up at all. <laughs> yeah, on double wall though the wall, it's fine. It's all good. Yeah, it's yeah. I I can't see a way for them to come back. Like they're just, as you said, delaying the inevitable. It there seems little point to carry on. If a high elo team should know what their composition is and what they're trying to go for, and they should also know when it's like over. Because okay, they have picking, and they might pick up this kill into Scarner, but. Look how tanky is as well. I hope Asa Hunter's barely scratched his shield off. And now they're just going to go ahead and take Baron with four spawn spitters. Wow. That's oh some uh, pretty fast Baron taking. Wow. That That is... Um, that's interesting, Pulse. The amount of spitters that were coming up and just annihilating Baron. And again, you look at Cyanide, it's almost like he's toying with Urgot. He's like, dude, you can't kill me. What, what are you doing? He's just taking no damage whatsoever. Look at his items though. Aegis of the Legion, Glacial Shroud, Heart of Gold, Cloth Armor, Shirelia's Reverie. There's lots and lots of items built up on towards uh, the Skarna right now as it stands. They have to be so careful. Shirelia's Reverie hasn't popped off from Skarna. He's going to flash in and impale onto Urgot. That's going to be all she wrote for Urgot. Can't see him getting out of this situation. There you go. Has been taken down finally. Brand in the meantime going to get caught out. The owner does ultimate in with the solar flare. Catches on towards a couple players from AI. But they're not going to be chasing in this kill. Meanwhile at mid we saw Kennen flashing up red from Zyra's burst once again and uh, with Bran you feel it's only a matter of time before that last nail is put in the coffin of AI. Pyroclasm does come out from Bran but doesn't manage to claim any kills, gets Corky very close though and enough to make him recall but look Shaman at top is pushing the tower which is going to go down any second now you've got the minions pushing mid and the bot tower has a creep wave coming towards it alongside a cyanide on Skarna so it, it's just it's over, Pulse. It's kind of that simple. Yeah, I'm surprised they still haven't recognized that. And Chava <laughs> Zyra's just basing them with the seeds, and they're trying to step on them, and she just chunks off like 50% of their HP. It's not worth it. 
honestly, and they can just afford to split push all day. I, there's nothing they can do to stop it. Uh, okay. Oh well, I think Urgot used his ulti there, didn't he? He switched with yeah. Zyra, but Zyra instantly flashed over the wall. So, in a, in a strange twist of fate there, Urgot actually put himself in a whole lot of danger. Was forced to flash himself back across the wall. So it was like a game of musical chairs or something, where everyone's just switching around. Here comes Lionel with the ultimate, onto Urgot. Here comes Leona as well. Corky in the meantime, perfect positioning. He's going to pick up a double kill. Can he get the triple on towards Brand? Yes, he will. And he's now going to be picking up those creeps in the mid. And I'm expecting to see a surrender vote soon. Well, to be honest, I expected it like 15 minutes ago. It didn't come. Either way, that's going to be the first inhib falling in mid. Top inhib could be following very, very quickly afterwards. Or, of course, the bot too. It's just one of those kind of situations where Fnatic can pretty much do whatever they please. Red Oak did come in, but a 1 to 4 against. Well, I don't really understand that. And the, the 1 had a lot of sense there, but okay, that would be another pickup for Feliox this time. Supporting these kills at this stage. And. Yeah, I, I don't know what they're hoping for. Perhaps a double explosion, but that's all I can, all I can see for them right now. Uh, it's yeah, like the plants are just chunking off the enemy's HP, and when you can't duel one of Zyra's plants, you know it's over. <laughs> it is, it is looking pretty dire at that stage. The solar flare house came down. It's going to be one kill onto Brand. In fact, two kills. Zyra will pick that one up onto Urgot very comfortably at the end of the day. And uh, second Nexus Tower is falling right now alongside the Nexus. So Skarna, unless he does something stupid and jumps in, is uh, going to go completely perfect here. Lots of executions on towards the fountain. That's three now, is it? Nope, Shavana is not going to fall down. And yeah, Cyanide 3 0 on 15 scoreline. Beautiful scoreline actually with uh, Skarna, considering the kind of player and the mentality that you go in to the game with. Can they pick up the last two kills? Looks likely as is the first one onto Kennen. Stampy's going to try his best to escape, but has been impaled, and that should sign his death warrant. In fact, he's going to be able to escape. Nice play from him, but please, Fnatic, finish it off. Put AI out of their misery, for the love of God. Yeah, at this stage of the game, it really works hard for Lee Sin because they can place water over their base, and then he can um, jump to them all like a monkey. So, picking Lee Sin will have the heads up here. He's like oh, wait, no. He's like Spider-Man or something with all it's, those yeah. wards around, but it's not going to do enough. He's, he's not going to be able to web down the opposition and steal the, the win. <laughs> so, yeah, 29-10. Fairly one-sided to say the least there, Paul. 33 minutes. It could have been over in about 25, to be entirely honest. So, yeah, Fnatic going through very comfortably into the second round here of the 4PL Corset Vengeance Cup. And we will be right back after this short commercial break for game number two and round number two. Don't go anywhere. I've just been told it's Team Megashock against Team Alternate, so it should be a really, really good game, guys. Stay tuned. We'll see you right after these. <laughs> 